Well, it is News Extra Time on K&E Bay. And our program here this morning brought to you by Intralinks Technical Solutions and Gearing. And online at intralinks.net. Here's Kevin Mooney. Thank you very much, Steve. Good morning, everyone. Really pleased to have Senator John Stinner here today before he heads out for the legislative session that will begin on uh, January 3rd. That's a week from today. And uh, he's heading out, I think, uh, tomorrow, as a matter of fact. So uh, I imagine the budget, as the chairman of the Appropriations Committee, probably has had your attention since, what, about June? Since right after the session pretty much ended, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, Actually, we have met a couple times. uh, The Tax Rate Review Committee, by law, has to meet after each one of the forecasting boards and and then to uh, meet to certify the budget. So we've met at least twice, three times, uh, one time informally, just to try to talk over what our options are and uh, what's causing the shortfall and if there's anything that we can do legislatively to uh, to turn things around. Yeah. You guys are looking at a $200 million shortfall. Uh, I know when you were up at the uh, up here at the, uh, le- at the uh, legislative breakfast, you mentioned that maybe you've got a handle on maybe where you might find $100 million of it, but... Finding the other hundred million might be difficult. What what kind of things can you do to address that? Well, right now the governor has sent a memo out to forty some agencies um, and actually has curtailed some of the allotments. Now, every quarter they get about twenty five percent of your budget. Well, you're mm-hmm. going to get twenty four percent. So there's the one percent, one percent. Obviously, if you do that for a full year, it would be a four percent. And and so when you start to work those numbers. Uh, if it's the same as LB22, which I think it will be, uh, it's about $80, $90 million. Um, after that, you have to really look at reappropriations. Um, you have to look at strategic cuts, and that's that's where it's going to get very, very dicey and very interesting. Yeah, because uh, then when you do strategic cuts, you're cutting somebody's program, that uh, and they're going, why me instead of why the other, not the other guy, right? Yeah, and many times it takes a change in statute because the statutes, the federal laws, federal mandates, constitution really drives this budget. And people have to understand that, yeah, there's numbers there, but there's also statutes and laws right behind it. So, yeah. Well, we were talking 92% of the budget you guys pretty much already know is is going to be spent on certain things, right? Yeah, it, there's three themes that go through this budget. 45%, uh, 46% is education. That's K through 12 as well as high, uh, higher education. So that's kind of our future, and that's our investment in the future. Then you have the have-tos, and I call it aid to individuals. Mostly Medicaid uh, is mandated by federal, federal laws, and, and uh, we have to carry those things out. Now, there are other statutes that we've passed. But really, it's something that we have to do as a state. That's 35%. Corrections, state patrol, uh, judges, Supreme Court, that makes up, that gets you to 92% of the budget in those three three areas, three three themes, themes that we have. And, uh, you know, it doesn't leave very much for strategic cuts. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, you guys will probably got $369 million in the reserve. Probably a little bit of that will go to help cover this shortfall yeah um actually in visiting with the budget director uh we've talked about uh utilizing the cash reserve uh we're going to wait till probably after the may forecast to see where where this budget shortfall is so we can make the appropriate adjustments actually i'm hopeful that it starts to come back up and we don't have to use as much in the cash reserve and maybe as much in cuts but that might be wishful thinking on my part well maybe it might come up a little bit you never know All right, we'll talk about things other than the budget right after this. Is your wireless computer network secure? With their years of professional service, you can trust Intralink's technical solutions to keep your small or medium business computer system up and running. Not having a secure wireless network can put your computers at risk. Call Intralink's at 632-6590 to have one of their highly experienced techs set up, troubleshoot, and secure your wireless network. For weekly tips and information, friend Intralink's on Facebook at intralinks.net slash Facebook. All right, we're back on News Extra. Senator John Stinner is here. We've talked about the budget, of course, through our first part of our program. There are a couple of bills, though, that the senator 
really wants to discuss that he looks at as priorities for the panhandle in addition to the budget. One of them is LB98, which involves the uh, three-cent levy uh, authority for the NRD. Yes, and I think that people have to understand that we have dealt with an 8,000 acre feet of water and, and basically restoring that back to river flows. The next increment comes in 2018. And thoughts are that it might be 10 to 15,000 acre feet, which is, which is very material. Uh, I would hate to see us not have that uh, for our local people to, to utilize uh, in the appropriate fashion. So uh, it's a big bill for us in western Nebraska. It's something that our local board, with, who I think does a great job of managing uh, all of the regulations and and. Right now, they're not using the three cents, but they, they obviously will in the future. And anything that we do that it impacts uh, the farm, the water situation, uh, obviously is going to affect our economy as well. So it's something that I think is a big priority for Western Nebraska. Yeah, they could use that uh, authority for projects that can really help them out dealing with that next increment of water going to the river. Uh, LB 496. This was uh, something they ta- you guys talked about last year in this session, uh, workforce housing, but it's there again. Yeah, and that's, it's actually on select file. Um, I actually was filibustered and missed by one vote because somebody went out of town. So I was short of one <laughs> vote. It's coming back up. That's probably one that I will prioritize again. I am a believer in, in the need to fulfill workforce and workforce housing go hand in hand. And uh, the needs is obvious across the state i think if you looked at the state chamber survey for the last five years workforce has been their number one uh need as far as business is concerned small business and growing nebraska i think that uh to attract and retain the type of workforce that we need to stabilize our communities and to grow our communities it needs to have housing yeah and like you said this involves tiff money that kind of brings the affordability down uh, as far as construction goes right? yes uh, our construction costs are generally much higher than the rest of the state so there is a gap between somebody that's making fifty sixty thousand dollars and a mortgage at one hundred and twenty thousand versus building something for 150 180 um, <clears throat> if we can do four to five or six homes obviously we can drop some of that cost per square footage down and uh, my hopes are that this bill will be flexible enough to uh, incent builders along with uh, being able to fill that that gap from an affordability standpoint. All right, we only got about 30 seconds left. I guess uh, just kind of wish you a happy new year. You've got 60 days. Um, Boy, a lot of things that you got to address. A lot lot of things going to come back. Uh, uh, Certainly the the newspaper today had had several of those items. Uh, Certainly Dan Watermeyer's uh, online sales tax. Uh, needs to come back and needs to get passed. So mm-hmm. it's it's really a fairness issue on the Main Street side of things. And I think that as you look at what has happened to sales tax, it's really flatlined and actually is going down. But that's just the consumer that, uh, that has now tri- uh, gone to online a lot heavier than what, uh, what we originally thought. And we need to save uh, our local stores uh, and make sure that uh, we not only support them during Christmas, but throughout the whole year, right? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. All right. Very good. Senator John Stinner, uh, we appreciate him stopping by today as he makes his way to Lincoln for the session that begins a week from today.